Hello and welcome. In this video, I want to show you some examples of squeeze theorem or sandwich theorem. If you want to learn more about squeeze theorem, watch my other video about this theorem. Here I'm going to directly show you the questions. I'm not going to go over the theorem itself. The first question is this. Use a squeeze theorem to show that limit x approaches 0 of a square root 2x to the 3 plus 5x to the 2 times by cosine of pi over x is equal to 0. When we want to use squeeze theorem for finding limits, Usually, we start with the trig part of the limit. So here, for finding this limit, we have to start with this part, the cosine of pi over x. The expression cosine pi over x is always between negative 1 and 1. This is the first step in most of these type of limits that we prove them with the squeeze theorem so always we put the trig function by the trig function i mean especially only sine and cosine not tangent only sine and cosine we know in general sine and cosine it doesn't matter what is here everything can be here sine and cosine is always between negative one and one they oscillate between negative one and one so cosine of pi over x is between negative 1 and 1 and the lower bound and the upper bound of this function are negative 1 and 1 so you have to keep this in your head for sine and cosine after this we try to make this expression in the middle like this limit what is the difference between this expression and this of course it's radical so now you have to multiply both sides of this inequality by this radical to make it like this. If, <coughs> if you multiply by the radical, then we have negative radical 2x to the 3 plus 5x2 less than equal radical 2x to the 3 plus 5x to cosine of pi over x and in the right the radical so we multiply everything by the radical now in the middle we have this expression but look at the left and the right functions if you look at these functions these are much simpler functions than this and we can find these limits easily with substitution if we plug in zero in each of these limits what is limit of this one when x approaches zero if we plug in zero here and here of course this is zero and the other one is also zero so the limit of the left is zero limit of the right is zero and now, based on the squeeze theorem, the limit of the middle one is also zero. Let me name this one, let's say, function g of x, for example. And this one, h of x. Limit of g of x, or the radical you can write, you don't need to name it anything. When x approaches zero, is zero again why this limit is zero because if you plug in zero for x here and here everything is zero and also limit of h of x when x approaches zero is zero now you have to write this sentence otherwise your solution is not complete now based on the squeeze theorem from squeeze theorem or sandwich theorem from squeeze theorem we can conclude 
that the limit of the middle function that limit of radical 2x to the 3 plus 5x to the 2 times by cosine of pi over x when x approaches 0 is also 0 maybe you think why we cannot this find this limit directly by substitution because if you plug in 0 here the first radical is 0 that's fine you can find the limit of this part with substitution but if you want to plug in 0 here pi over 0 would be undefined so sub direct substitution doesn't work otherwise if you can find the limit with the direct substitution there is no need to use a squeeze theorem this was one example of a squeeze theorem. Let me show you another example to get more familiar with the squeeze theorem or sandwich theorem. Now we want to prove this limit. Prove that, this is the question. Prove that limit x approaches zero from the right of radical x cubed e to the power of sine of 2 over x is equal to 0. If you remember from the previous question where we start this type of question from the trig part from here from the cosine we start. So here you have to start from the sine part of this limit. Forget these parts. Start from here. So first we say sine of 2 over x is always between negative 1 and 1. Any sine or cosine function is always between negative 1 and 1. Now we want to make this middle function like the expression in front of the limit what is the difference first this e so here we have to say okay now we raise attention we raise e exponential function to the power of this to the power of this so the power of this i mean something like this let me write down you can understand better e to the negative one is less than equal to e to the sine of 2 over x and it is less than e to the 1 and why we can do this because exponential function is a one-to-one -one function or as or actually it is an increasing function so we can do this but don't worry for that learn the method now what is the difference that radical so we are going to multiply that radical by both sides so then we have e to the negative 1 times radical x to the 3 less than equal radical x 3 e to the sine of 2 over x and in the right we have e times radical x to the 3 and now look at this what is limit of this expression when x approaches 0 it is 0 you can write it like this let me write down limit of e to the negative one times radical x to the three when x approaches zero from the right is zero and also limit of e times radical x to the three when x approaches zero from the right is also zero why because simply plug in zero zero this would be zero times e is zero. If you don't know why here the limit is only from the right it's because of this radical here if x approaches 0 from the left then the inside of the radical would be negative and in this square root we cannot have negative so then the limit would be doesn't exist the limit doesn't exist so it's necessary that here x approaches 0 only from the right but the process of the solving doesn't change at all now that the limit from the limit of the left function is zero limit of the right function is zero so we can conclude from sand which theorem 
we can conclude that radical x to the 3 times e to the sine of 2 over x when x approaches 0 is also 0. Let me show you one more example of squeeze theorem and then we finish this video. We want to prove that again with the squeeze theorem or sandwich theorem. We want to show that when x approaches 1 from the right, let's say, x2 minus 1 times by sine of pi over x minus 1 plus cosine of 2 pi over x minus 1 as usual we want to prove that this limit equals 0 like the previous examples you have to start from the trig part of the question but here we have two trig part sine plus cosine Sine of pi over x minus 1 is always between negative 1 and 1. Also, cosine is also between negative 1 and 1. But here we have sine plus cosine. So we are going to add this to this. So we add the middle to the middle we add left to the left and we add the right to the right so actually from this we can conclude that sine of pi over x minus 1 plus cosine of 2 pi over x minus 1 is between negative 2 and 2 what happened we added the middle terms to each other we got this if we add negative 1 to negative 1 it's negative 2 and the right would be 2. So sine plus cosine is always between negative 2 and 2, which makes sense. Now, like the previous question, we have to convert this to this. How? Simply multiply both sides by x2 minus 1. So we are going to multiply left, middle, and the right by x2 minus 1. Then we have negative 2 times x2 minus 1 less than equal x2 minus 1 times by sine of pi over x minus 1 plus cosine of 2 pi over x minus 1 and this is less than 2 times x2 minus 1. Now what is the limit of this when x approaches 1? Limit of negative 2 times x2 minus 1 when x approaches 1 is 0. Because you plug in 1 here and you can see it's 0. And similarly, limit of the right side when x approaches 1 is 0. Actually, 1 from the right. Now that this limit is 0, the other limit is also 0. So we can conclude that from a squeeze theorem, the given limit is also 0. So, we can write it this way, from squeeze theorem, we can conclude that limit x approaches 1 from the right of x2 minus 1 times by sine of pi over x minus 1 plus cosine of 2 pi over x minus 1 is also 0. Let me explain something here. Why in this question it's x approaches 1 from the right? Here it's not necessary to be x approaches 1 from the right. This can be also from the left and actually it can be only x approaches 1. But the reason that it's x approaches 1 from the right, because it makes solving this question simpler. Why? Attention. When x approaches 1 from the right, x2 minus 1 would be positive expression. Attention. x approaches 1 from the right, so x is greater than 1. And when x is greater than 1, x2 minus 1 would be positive. It approaches 0, I know. When x approaches 1, this is 0. 
but it approaches zero from the right, so it's positive expression. Why it matters? When we have an inequality like this and we want to multiply both sides by something, we have to make sure that that thing is positive. Otherwise, you have to flip these signs. Probably you know this rule. I hope you like this video and see you in the next videos.